The Legendary Hero Remix banner for January 2022 has been released. It features two Legendary Heroes who got their new Remix buffs, but you are able to spark anyone from this 8-man banner. There's going to be a 6% 5 star focus rate with no pity breakers. Today we'll be covering everyone on the banner and what fun skills they have to offer. As a quick game update, the current Grand Conquest event was bugged, so it's being rescheduled and everyone is getting 10 compensation orbs. Maybe you can use them here. Our first Remix Legendary Hero is Erica. Her Lunar Brace 2 B skill got an upgrade and she got a Refine for Storm Siglin. If you want a more in-depth talk about these new tools, then you can watch my Update 6.1 Refines video. We will quickly go through the changes though for this banner video. Legendary Erica is a pretty fast Sword Cavalier and her Lunar Brace B skill used to grant extra true damage on special proc, but came with a plus one special cooldown penalty. That playstyle got handed off to Brave Erica, who is a monster of her own, and Lunar Brace 2 got a complete overhaul. Now it gives Kanto 2, no follow-up 3, and true damage on hit equal to 50% of the foe's defense stat. Storm Signal's Refine essentially grants plus 8 to all stats for Erica, she gets dodge damage reduction, and Erica gets plus 1 special charge for every action. Basically, Legend of Erica combines the infantry swordmaster builds of dodge and no follow-up with the cavalry Kanto playstyle. Erica also gets easy cooldown reduction, which is a bit hard to come by on cavaliers. For her new extra skill, the remix boss granted or uh, er upgraded Erica to attack at speed solo 4. You can easily stack that with the sacred seal version, and Legend of Erica is pretty much ready to go. She wants to stack a ton of speed like any dodge user, and you can run a variety of specials like Moonbow or Ruptured Sky or Aether. If you want more speed perks, and attack at speed menace is great for initiations, just like her brave alt. Erica can also run Surge Sparrow because she needs to stay healthy and it plays off a of dodge well. Tech and Speed Catch is another option, but generally sticking with the solo skills is perfectly fine. If you want another but or another fun buffing skill, Rouse Attack and Speed 3 or 4 is great. Erica can also go with Smoke Debo since she can initiate and then Kanto away. Speaking of Kanto, she can also run Gale Force like her brother, and if you want to mess around with a Kanto Cav, you can just hand her a Fire Sweep Sword to be annoying. Like Fallen Dimitri, you could get the Fire Sweep and Kanto combo going. Now, if you want to put some pressure on defenders, Erica can go with a 4 cooldown special like Dragon Fang. She can proc it on her second attack if she takes a counter. If you super, if you have a super stacked a Legend of Erica with max investment, then she could also run things like Distant Counter for fun. Erica can also get Aether going pretty fast. Overall, Legend of Erica isn't doing anything super new, but like Legend of Ryoma, she brings infantry skills to the cavalry class. Very nice refine pretty easy to build around, and Kanto is busted as usual. Our second legendary remix goes to Lucina. Her future vision assist skill lets Lucina swap with an ally, and then she gets to move again. It's an extremely powerful movement ability, and with the remix buff, Lucina now inflicts minus 7 attack and defense debuffs on the nearest foes within 4 spaces after you swap. Debuffs are great, but they synergize with Dogen's Refine. Dogen now gives Lucina extra stats against any foe, and she gains the Plagian effect against attack speed and defense debuffs. Lucina can swap with future vision, debuff some foes, and then take advantage of the debuffs for better combat prowess. In addition, Dogen gives Lucina and her ally a buff when using an assist skill. They both get a follow-up attack when you initiate. This is an extremely powerful status because follow -up, or free follow-ups can make any high attack unit deadly even if they're very slow. There are many ways to counter it, but it's never a bad thing to have and Lucina can use the follow-up herself. For her new remix skill, Legendary Lucina upgraded to Swiss Sparrow 3. You can keep that since she's still mainly a player phase unit. If you want a simple B skill, Lucina works incredibly well with Link B skills. She can future vision swamp, apply debuffs, and then buff herself and her ally for combat. Since Lucina has the Plagian effect, you can also add something else like attack smoke to survive other enemies. She can get a lot of bulk if the attack debuffs start to stack up. If you want to not get hit, Lucina could run Wind or Water Sweep. Her free follow-up from Dogen can cancel the penalty from those skills, allowing Lucina to double while not getting hit back. If you prefer to tank it out, she can run Sturdier or Mirror Impact. You can get plus 10 defense of res, a follow-up prevention, on top of the pledge and attack debuffs, and that can be incredibly annoying. If you're looking for special options, Lucina has room for the classic Times Pulse to Flashing Blade. As an archer, she can also run Deadeye for death damage reduction nullification. Last, if you want some extra utility, you can go with Attack and Speed Menace to apply speed debuffs, and you can debuff other foes not hit by Future Vision. Attack and Speed Oath can let Lucina buff herself. Then you got Wings of Mercy to fly in, use Future Vision, and then make an attack. Overall, Legend of Lucina still keeps her amazing assist skill, but adds a ton more combative power for herself. The free follow-up status is also incredible, although it is a player phase only effect, so you have to be aggressive. 
it's a very neat refine, especially considering the mobility madness going on in today's game. Let's now take a look at the other heroes on the banner. In red, we have Legendary Erika. For skill fodder, the best she has to offer is Attack and Speed Solo 4. Her other two inheritable skills are not exactly high priority, unfortunately. Joining Erika is going to be Catherine. She's a speedy sword infantry unit, and her Thunderbrand sword comes with offensive no follow-up and desperation at any HP. This means when Catherine initiates combat, she can two-tap immediately, and she isn't stopped by worry fighter type skills. If you want some fodder skills, then she can go with Swiss Sparrow 3 and Low Speed and Defense 3. Both of these are great skills for a variety of units and builds. We have multiple free-to-play or free-to-play friendly sources of Swiss Sparrow 2 now, so if you can get that beforehand, you can get low speed and defense for some great value. Next in the blue group is Legendary Lucina. You can all, or she also doesn't have the greatest skills outside of Swiss Sparrow 3. Wings of Mercy is on other low rarity units, and Distant Guard is also on quite a number of free to play heroes. You can use Swiss Sparrow 2 to get another full skill, but neither of these are super crazy. Now, joining Lucina is a special unit. Dual Ephraim and Leon are technically limited time units, but they released on a new hero banner. Outside of their banner rerun, some hero fests, and special banners like this one, no one knows when they may show up again. They are in a very unique limbo situation, and it's a good thing Ascended Heroes did not follow the same pattern. As a dual unit, Ephraim and Leon do get the extra arena score bonus, and their dual skill lets infantry and army units or within two spaces move one extra space for that turn. This could be great for something like summoner duels. Dual Ephraim is a lance infantry with high attack and defense. Regan Leaf is effective against cavalry and army units, plus if Ephraim has more attack than the foe, or he has a movement buff, he gets a follow-up attack. He has low attack and defense to help win the attack check and odd attack wave for some self-boss. Dual Ephraim is only one of two units to have Heavy Blade 4. Funny enough, Pirate to Barn is part of a New Year's bundle right now and he is the other Heavy Blade 4 user. If you really want that skill, you can either pay directly or you can spark Ephraim. If you use Dual Ephraim, be sure to grab Heavy Blade 3 from Janki and get low attack and defense 3 on the side. For the green group, we have Legendary Lin back again. Lin is a green infantry archer and she has her refine and remix boss. Swift so Molecule gives Lin plus 10 attack and speed, extra true damage on hit, equal to 50% of her speed stat, and impenetrable dark, so she disables all support skills affecting the foe. With uh, Laws of Sake 2, Lin gets plus 6 to all stats, and if she outspeeds melee units with 5 or more speed, she prevents their follow up, or she prevents their counter attacks. This replicates Brave Lin Sake's blessing, sort of. If you want skills to inherit the remix buffs gave Lin joint drive speed, it's a very nice C skill for any unit. Lin then has rally defense and res and desperation 3 but there are other ways to get these lower tier skills. She also has speed tactic 3 if you want it. Overall Legendary Lin got some much needed buffs but she's definitely not a super powerhouse or anything. In fact she has a very close competitor with the other green archer on this banner. That would be Shamir. Shamir is a green infantry archer with some amazing offensive stats. The reason many compare Lin to Shamir is that Shamir's survivalist bow, Exoid Specials, gives bonus attack and speed, and against healthy enemies, she gains a fire sweep effect. Lin can only get fire sweep against melee units, whereas Shamir can get fire sweep against ranged units too. She is a very scary unit. For other skills, Shamir has great fodder. She has attack speed solo 4, no fall 3, and rouse attack and speed 3. All of these are very rare and powerful skill options, so you can't go wrong with choosing any of them. Last up is Colorless, and once again, Legendary Grima joins the banner. If you don't have her but you want her, you may want to summon this time. Legendary Grima may also receive her refined and remix buffs already. She's a flying colorless dragon with a distant counter weapon, and she receives plus 10 to all stats, she gets guard, and she neutralizes the foe's field buffs. She also neutralizes fly effectiveness, so she can tank arrows as usual. Grima has a very balanced spread of stats, so she can be fast and take decent punishment. She has speed and res rain 3 for free, which is extra in combat debuffs. That is pretty much her best go to inherent, but Grima also has res smoke, which is actually kind of rare itself. I have to say that Legendary Grima has become an incredibly good journalist with her new buffs. Her most common build is for sure the Dragon Wall setup, and she can put in a lot of work now. Last unit for today is Layla. Layla is a colorless infantry dagger with good attack and speed stats. Her constant dagger is very interesting. If Layla initiates within two spaces of her support partner, she can endure counterattacks, and after combat, she swaps with her support partner. This is a similar vibe to Yuri's trickster shenanigans, but it occurs after making an attack. Layla must also have a support ally to do this with, and you only have a two space range. You can make some crazy plays, but you'll need to execute very well. 
Now, besides the fancy stuff, Layla just hits hard, she has life and death 4, and her dagger also gives some extra attack and speed buffs. She then has Rally Attack and Speed Plus and Attack and Defense Ruse 3. These are some viable skills for offense or support, so Layla is a solid fodder unit if you don't want to use her. That's going to be it for this month's Legendary Remix banner. Here is when the next rerun is scheduled for the 4 legendaries from this banner. If you want Erica, you better get her now, otherwise you have to wait till November. That is a very long time. For Lucina and Lynn, they return in July. Then for Grima, she's actually finally getting the boot. She won't appear next Remix banner, but instead she has to wait till September. The reason Grima is finally being replaced is that we've made our way to the other colorless legendary, Alm. Also, we are certainly doing Mythic Remixes as well because we have Air and Duma. Those three will probably take a colorless spot until Grima returns. For those keeping track, Grima has made a pretty good run. Back in 2018, she made 9 consecutive Legendary Banner appearances. For the Legendary Remixes, Grima has appeared on 6 consecutive Remix Banners. That means you could have sparked her 6 times in the last year, which is actually absurd when you think about it. I am sure that has to be up there as one of the highest counts for sparking any unit. For those on the fence about summoning, we do have a double special heroes banner coming this month as well. As a reminder, with the Fae Pass, you can spark the double special heroes banner now. The Legendary Remix will also overlap, so you can wait to see who shows up. We also have the Anniversary at the start of February, and generally we get Hero Fest banners at that time. Christmas and New Year's may have passed, but Fae still has a lot of orb tempting spending outlets left. To those that are summoning now, I wish you good luck, and I'll see you in the next video.